안녕하십니까? 골담 치과 병원 치과 부철과. Hello, this is Kim h a k u of the Goldam Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to talk about porcelain fracture, which uh, is a upper side complication. So I'm going to talk about reasons of the fracture, clinical consideration, and how to resolve the situation. 2012, so in 2012, in this literature, it shows a various implant complication. There is high likelihood of a porcelain fracture in case of implant, unlike natural teeth, there is no pedia and there is no proprio reception. So it's a weak against stress, and uh, compared to natural teeth, uh, there's more likelihood of porcelain fracture. The reason for such fracture that could be due to technical error, coping design, or the substructure thickness, occlusion, or patient factors. So there are many different reasons for the fracture. The first reason for technical error, um, it could be fracture due to bubble, and this um, issues. You don't know when it's delivered. A bubble, if it's not visible, you just delivered, and the patient uh, might come back uh, quickly to your clinic, and you could see there was a problem in the technical level. So, a uh, dentist needs to do a good job, but your technicians and your labs also need to have a good quality control. So for this type of porcelain buildup, uh, if it's done well, then uh, you have to think about coping design. In the one-step process, coping is on the lower side sometimes, so you don't check. But in reality, if the porcelain for it to be sustained, 1.5, 2 millimeter, it, it would be the max uh, for binyo porcelain production and there should be coping design that can uh, give good support. And actually, as we called cap in the past, the two small coping and put porcelain on top of it, it will break uh, easily. So in uh, this, uh, making it, full control works out, and then you do cut back and then put cup, uh, porcelain. It's more tricky if it's implant. For natural teeth, it's wider, but implant, when we use mostly netty ab uh, made abutment, abutment is small, so it's not easy to create, uh, to create metal structure or do porcelain build out on top of it. In 07 case, at that time, the process, I used wax, so I did full control wax up, and then certain thickness was measured to create index, and then everything was cut back, then checked, and it was produced. So the process was rather complicated. Uh, technicians uh, could do it, but we cannot check every step. But since 2018 or so, uh, CAT CAM started to be used, and for full zirconia or PFZ, CAT design can be done beforehand. So you check design, and cutback design uh, you could check with photo and make corrections. So now, compared to the past, you can reduce the possibility of the porcelain fracture from the design. And as I said before, in the past, you cast it and you most and used for custom abutment, but mostly you use ready-made abutment. So premolar might be okay, but if for molar side, if it's wide, if you don't use good matching ready-made abutment, the metal structure could be uneven, and in the build-up, due to temperature difference, it could become vulnerable, and if it's small subset, and the porcelain being in different thickness, uh, it fractured porcelain. So nowadays, mostly custom abutments used, so you create appropriate design and appropriate thickness. Uh, processes uh, can be made with the custom abutment, and more better designed processes will be the result. So thick porcelain breaks, but thin porcelain also uh, breaks. And for the uh, smaller space area, the axis for placement or abutment implant diameter inevitably result in uh, making it thinner, but with the porcelain buildup, and uh, through various process, there's thin uh, cannot really uh, support, so crack could be result, and with after delivery, baller discoloration of fracture could be the result. So thin substructure should also be avoided. 
Another thing, uh, when you tell the technician for complicated cases, dentist needs to make a clear directions to the technician. So this was 2012 case, it was class 3, and it had a lot of uh, resorption on the upper side. Class 3 has a lot of uh, strong occlusal force, so joint area is important. So for the posterior side, uh, there's a lot of fractures, occlusal stability, and prevent uh, fracture uh, used metal. And for the anterior side, a patient, if it's natural teeth, there is a loosening. So for class 3, because of the strong force, uh, mostly cross bite, patient do not like. So you go with edge bite, but at the end of the edge bite could result in porcelain chipping. So in 2012, I delivered, and for the anterior lower side, it was a bit of movement, but there was a pain, so I switched to bridge. And design-wise, in the metal area on the posterior side in 2017, if there was a fracture, it could be used, but on the anterior side, due to the constant force, there was chipping. So, PFM or PFZ, when we make them, with the junction where porcelain meta mate or with the meat with the disjunction side, there should be at least 1.0 millimeters of distance in the centric stops. So, all this needs to be considered, and I, uh, all the situation considered, so I removed it. For the long unit prosthesis, ER type, in creating, when you have to consider repair, if a cement type, they would have been very challenging. But from the initial design, the axis direction was considered and the path was adjusted for fit. So through axis hope, the process was removed, temporarily was used, and then I removed it. And depending on change of the occlusal point, design was um, adjusted. So in 2017, new build-up delivered and it's been used quite well even now. So occlusion, uh, portion fracture, plays an important role. So for this case, on the number 7 back side, a porcelain broke, so it looked dark. So I didn't do this case, but I took a photo of this, because back side there was a fracture, but it didn't, it's not important, so I polished it and I asked a patient to continue to use it. But I said, I took a bite, and CO and COR position, it was moving around, and there was a bit of dual bite, anterior bite, there was uh, no absence of anterior guidance, so so on the back side, there was a lot of load, so there was a premature contact resulting in fracture. Then, in coping design, and also in technician does a lot of adjustment, still there could be fracture. So if there's a lot of fracture, what should you do? So porcelain, Fractured can be using composite resin, or you could use a repair kit for it to make repair. But if that's impossible, you prep and you create double crown. Or in case of ER type, or if the fracture is really big, the portion can be removed for remake or rebuild up. In reality, there's not many cases where you can do a personal repair. This was not an implant case, but the patient would bite on the fork and there was a chipping of porcelain, but it came back with the chipped part. So if the metal is uh, seen, even with the resin, the color will be bad, but with the repair kit, I could you know, put it again because uh, the fractured part was uh, saved by the patient. So this type of repair, but it's very tricky if it's posterior area. So this case, Number 34, implant, fractured, so, and the, you know, food uh, was stuck in there. 
이 경우에 보면은 long lens r o So it was a long case. So removing everything for repair was tricky. So what I did was the thickness was sufficient. So I prepped it, and as an overlay, uh, I. Uh, partial PFM was used for delivery. So it was 2010 and up to 2019, it's being used very well. Uh, and, you know, there, she, she was very satisfied with the result. With the pandemic, we call check uh, it's not really being kept by many patients, but hopefully it's maintained very well. And if it's ER type and if it's single or splint type, then you could just uh, remove it and repair it. But if it's cement type, removing it is tricky. So to find screw hole, sometimes process is grinded also while grinding. So abutment can be safe, but you have to create new crown. And you might think repair would be very quick, but if it's portion for used for a long time, there would be good, a lot of crack. If you put in furnace, it, there's a bubble and burst. So you have to give sufficient time for uh, repair because you sometimes need real build up also. So it takes sufficient time for repair. So what we can think is, you know, outside of box. Porcelain will fracture. So if it's weak area, do not use porcelain. That might be the answer. So the nuclear force is very strong for this case also. On the lower side, custom abutment was used and PFZ was used at the time and gold occlusion and the buckle side porcelain was used. So overall, after 10 years for lower side, it was okay. But on the upper side, natural teeth, there was a mobility and then with the ocular force being strong, there's a, a lot of a fracture on the uh, bridge side. So PFM sometimes needs to be used, and in the lower ca uh, recent case, uh, there's forced occlusion at another dental clinic, and this was not an aesthetic area. So rather than using porcelain that can fracture, like 37, I said I will use metal, uh, which is stronger, and that could reduce the fracture risk. Besides that, uh, full zirconia is used a lot, but when we used to use a lot of PFM, then I covered at least one, uh, two, one uh, half with metal, because the force will be stronger at the back side. If there's no chimney, the person is not supported, then it becomes vulnerable. So putting metal there might be more important. These days, unlike the past, you use not really veneer porcelain. So unlike left, like on the right side, monolithic or full zirconia could be used, but of course, it solves a lot of things. There's no fracture, but because it's zirconia, it's really long, and joint, if it's uh, really thin, then joint fractures result in remake or removal. So technical, what you need to say is that joint uh, made stronger. Besides that, there could be really strong occlusion force. So for those patients, as I told with the complications, splint will be recommended, or you could do botot exemption. So the patient, uh, when she wakes up, uh, he bites a lot too strongly and is worried about implant being destroyed. So if the, you can get promise for compliance, then you could use nocturnal bruxism splint. So I could see he was really biting hard. After two, only two or three months, on number 23, the splint fractured. So with the splint, you cannot prevent proxism. But what I tell the patient is when there's rain, it's like wearing umbrella. When you have umbrella, rain will still uh, continue, but you will not get wet. So with the splint, natural teeth, muscles, or other things could be protected. So if it's a compliant patient, then you could use splint. Botox could be another option, but sometimes patients do not want to use Botox. So uh, you have to choose what is right for the patient or go with the patient preference.
자, 정리입니다. So summary. Like in prosthesis treatment, the implant, which is more vulnerable to shock, to reduce portion fracture, you have to have a more proper prosthetic design and have a better understanding of the materials. With that time, uh, the implant does not change, unlike natural teeth, so periodic recall check and occlusal adjustment will be more important. So we looked at porcelain fracture this time, and I hope this lecture has been helpful to you. And with that, I will conclude this lecture. Thank you very much.